Hello uh, to everyone who's watching this, and, and thanks for joining. I'm going to talk about my paper, Fitting a Kalman Smoother to Data. It's about fitting or tuning the parameters in a Kalman Smoother um, to best match a data set of measurements of a dynamical system. First, I'm going to talk about uh, Kalman Smoothing, what it is and, and how it's done. We're going to consider linear systems. Uh, with dynamics given here. So xt is the state and wt is a, is a random disturbance and the matrix A is the dynamics matrix. We're going to consider a finite time horizon of big T steps and little t denotes the time. And then at each step we're going to take a measurement yt of the state xt which is going to be some linear function uh, or defined by the matrix C of the state, uh, and, then, and then plus some noise V. And we're going to assume that the noise is W and V are both IID. So a lot of the time, some of the measurements can be missing. So we're going to modify the measurement equation um, so that when the measurement is known, it's, it's the actual measurement. And when it's not, we make that measurement uh, question mark. And we denote the, the set of times and entries that we know by the set script K. So we're going to assume that we know all the parameters in the system, which are the dynamics matrix, the measurement matrix, and the, the covariance matrices. And our goal is to be is is given these measurements to reconstruct the sequence of states x and and the the missing measurements y. Because the noise is Gaussian, uh, every the the distribution over states and dist and uh, measurements is jointly Gaussian, so we can construct a maximum likelihood estimate of the sequence of states and measurements by solving this optimization problem, uh, finding the maximum likelihood estimate. We can express that problem uh, very simply as a constrained least squares problem, uh, where z is a, a vector of the concatenated variables in the previous problem. Uh, the matrix B is, is a selector matrix that selects the entries of Z that we know. Um, C contains the entries that we know of YT, and D collects uh, the objective terms. Um, the optimality conditions for this problem are simply this linear system uh, where we've added an extra variable v, uh, which, is, which we make equal to d times z, and eta is a dual variable for the constraint. So to solve the, the common smoothing problem, we have to solve this linear system. And due to the construction of this linear system, it, uh, it's very sparse. So what we're going to do is there are many ways that you could solve this linear system, but what we're going to do is we're going to solve it using a uh, sparse LU factorization. So we factorize the matrix on the left, and then we use that factorization to, to do a back solve uh, on the right-hand side. We've observed uh, that this method of solving it is uh, roughly linear in the time horizon T. So in this, in this slide, we describe how one could imagine judging uh, a Kalman smoother. So the idea is that you're going to hold out some of the measurements that you actually know, uh, run the smoother on the remaining measurements, and then check performance on the, on the measurements that you held out. And the reason we check performance on the measurements instead of the state is because fundamentally, or we, we never know the state. Um, the state it almost serves as, as a regularizer 
uh, that, that helps us come up with good sequences of measurements. The measurements are the only things that are real. So more concretely, we construct the set script M uh, of missing measurements. And then we solve the common smoothing problem um, with hiding those measurements. And then we compute the prediction error, that is um, the sum of the square differences between uh, our predicted measurement and the actual measurement that occurred in all of the missing entries. And this is just for a single trajectory of the system. We could also do this for multiple trajectories of, of the system, compute L for each one of those, separately smoothing each one, and then average that to get an aggregate L. So you could consider a trajectory in machine learning terms as a single data point, and we could have multiple data points. So the, the parameters in a Kalman smoother, like we said before, are the dynamic, the dynamics matrix, the measurement matrix and the covariance matrices, and we're, we're going to consider, instead of the actual covariance matrices, the, uh, the, the matrix to the negative one half. And this is nice just because of uh, W, or the covariance matrices to the minus one half is what enters into D, not W or V itself. And this just makes our, com our computations uh, a little bit easier. And evidently, this, uh, this parameterization is, is not unique. For example, you could scale W and V by, by some number, um, and then you would get the same Kalman smoother, uh, because that just scales the objective in the constrained least squares problem by some number. But we're going to kind of ignore this. Um, The ultimate goal is to, to solve the following problem. We want to choose a, the parameters in a Kalman smoother so that we get a small uh, prediction error and also have a small value of some regularization function R. Uh, R is going to encode either prior knowledge that we have about the parameters, uh, constraints that we have on the parameters, uh, and so on. And uh, the set theta is the set of the parameters that we're going to allow. And you could incorporate prior knowledge here. So in this slide, we give it two examples of regularization functions one could consider. One good one is when you have an initial guess or some, or some prior on, on the parameters, and, and you want your the parameters that you choose to be close to that. So here we say we have a guess for the dynamics matrix A, A nom, A nominal, and we want A to be close to A nominal. So we could use this regularization function. Another possible case is that we might want C to be low rank, in which case we would use, for example, the nuclear norm uh, regularizer on C, which for lower rank C, it has a lower nu nuclear norm. Although any, any regularization function is possible. In this slide, we give two examples of allowable sets theta. Um, so maybe, so we, one, one possibility is that we could allow only cer certain entries in A to vary. So here we're saying the allowable set is every A that is equal to a nom at a set of specified entries, uh, but can vary in the other entries. Another possibility is that we could allow A to, to vary within a box, so it has to, it has to be close to A nominal. The solution method that we propose for this problem is a proximal gradient method. So the method works by first taking a, a step in the negative direction of the gradient of the, the prediction error L, and then performing a, a proximal step uh, for the function R. So when R is just 
the identically zero function. This simply reduces to the projected gradient method uh, because the prox is just the projection onto the set theta. But in general, this by using a proximal method, this allows us to use non-smooth R. And you might be asking yourself, how do we compute the derivative of the prediction error with respect to the parameters? And I'll describe how we do that in the next few slides. And that's pretty crucial uh, to our method. So in this slide, I'm going to describe how we compute the gradient of the prediction error with respect to the parameters. So we use the chain rule. So first we compute the gradient of L with respect to the predicted output, y hat. We denote that by G. And then we solve the following linear system uh, to get Q. And this linear system has the same coefficient matrix that we had to, to solve before uh, to find the, uh, to, to perform column smoothing. So si since we've already factorized this matrix, solving the, the system again for another right-hand side will be very fast. So after we found this vector Q, we can construct the gradient of the prediction error with respect to the matrix D uh, using this equation. And then once we've computed the gradient with respect to D, because D contains all of the parameters, we can extract the gradients with respect to all the parameters um, from, from that gradient. Here we show a, a simple example of running our code uh, to both perform Kalman smoothing and al then also take the gradient of Kalman smoothing. For a artificial example where n and p are both 10. So the number of states and number of measurements are both 10. And we do this for varying values of the horizon t. So all the way from 10 to 100,000. And as you can see, the scaling is roughly linear in that the long, the execution time is linear in the, in the time horizon. Um, and also you can see that the, uh, the differentiation takes about half the time as, sol as performing the smoothing. So the final example is going to be a vehicle smoothing example. Our state x is going to be the position, velocity, and acceleration of the vehicle in three dimensions. And the dynamics are simple double integrator dynamics uh, with a time discretization of uh, 10 milliseconds. Our measurement is going to be a noisy measurement of the position through GPS of the x and y velocity uh, through a gyroscope and of the, uh, of the acceleration. We collected data using an, IS, an iOS app mounted on a vehicle uh, driving around the Stanford campus. As we said before, there's a 100 hertz sampling frequency and we collected uh, measurements for 330 seconds resulting in 33,000 measurements. So T is somewhat large here. The results are that we were able to reduce the prediction error um, from 13 all the way down to 3. Um, so, so by a lot. And we were able to reduce the test error from 16 all the way down to 1.3. So by an order of magnitude. And learning the parameters took around 2 minutes. And here we show the position trace of the uh, of the imputed state sequence uh, before and after learning. And as you can see, after learning, it seems to match, uh, it, it seems much more realistic than before. Uh, so you can see we're recovering some really good parameters to use for the smoother. So the summary is that uh, we've uh, presented a method that can learn the parameters in a Kalman smoother uh, efficiently using, uh, using a gradient-based method um, so as to minimize the prediction error on held-out measurements. So that's it for my talk. Uh, thank you for listening.